I uh, was talking to him and he made the statement somewhere along the line of the conversation concerning his church. He said, we're not like you folks anymore. And, you know, that's not really uncommon especially nowadays, but it's been that way uh, all down through the generations. Noah had to stand be before his generation to complain that a flood was going to come and God was going to judge the world. We know that uh, prophets in the Old Testament had to confront godly and ungodly kings many times. And we also know that even in the New Testament, Jesus had to confront the religious leaders of his day. We know that uh, later on, the disciples had to confront those who did not accept the gospel that they were preaching. And of course, it's been that way. We even know, for instance, Martin Luther, uh, who I believe, um, as he stood before the uh, Diet of Worms, who had his books all sitting out there, and uh, they were considered to be uh, books that uh, were meant for the fire because they went against the Catholic Church at that time, that uh, he had to stand there and he said, here I stand, I can do no other, so help me God. So it's been that way down through the generations that those of us who believe in what the Bible says, thus saith the Lord, sometimes we have to stand. Sometimes it might seem like we're standing alone, but we have to continue to stand for that which gospel and what the Bible uh, teaches us. So uh, today, the choir would like to sing some songs about daring to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'd like you to join us later on. I'll turn around and I'll raise my hand and I'll have, want you to stand and sing the first verse of page 322 if you don't know the words. Stand up for Jesus. 322, when I stand to have you. And then after you, uh, we get done singing in your part, um, I'll turn back to the choir, but I would like you just to close you the can, just to remain standing until the end of the song. Uh, sometimes uh, folks, you know, I'll, I'll do anything to try to get folks to join the choir, even if I have to get them. <coughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord.
stand. We're going to get up and stand alone. Uh, it's good to stand. And, and, uh, and as uh, Slava mentioned, you know, it's uh, sad to hear the gentleman said, yeah, we're no longer like you. And, and uh, I said, you know, I said, we're going to still stand uh, for what is right. And uh, no matter what. Turn your Bibles, if you would, uh, with me this morning. Uh, we'll pick up uh, uh, where we left off in uh, uh, Second Peter. We uh, left off back, actually, I was looking at my calendar, and it was way back in March, uh, last time I preached uh, from the book of Second Peter. And uh, uh, so I'm going to pick that up, uh, not next week. Next week I have another message ready for Father's Day, uh, but uh, uh, we're really only picking that up uh, the week after. Today, uh, I'm going to preach to you from the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter number 4. 1 Chronicles, chapter number 4. Lord willing, tonight, uh, we'll see how I do after the message. I asked uh, Bill McCoy if he'd be ready. Uh, and uh, I had to uh, sit there in the Sunday school hour. And I've uh, uh, been dealing with some pain, but uh, hopefully... Uh, I'll be able to get through the message here this morning without too much of that. First Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter number 4. Uh, if you were to look at the uh, book of Chronicles, especially the first few chapters here, uh, it's really kind of talking about some genealogy and, uh, genealogies and, and uh, where people uh, come from. And, uh, we have, uh, if you were to look at chapter number 1, it uh, looks at uh, the Abraham line of uh, uh, to Noah, then uh, uh, sons of Ham, Shem, and, and Japheth, and, and uh, the sons of Esau, uh, some of the early uh, kings, uh, then the sons of Jacob in uh, chapter number two, and uh, uh, different uh, folks that are, are talked about in each of those. Then you have the family of David uh, in chapter number three, and uh, uh, even uh, Jehoi, uh, uh, Jeconiah's uh, lineage and all this, and and then you come to chapter 4, and by the way, I, I would always encourage you, if you're ever reading the Bible, don't skip over chapters, especially ones that say, this one begat this one, this one begat that one, and, and so on and so forth, because if you do skip over uh, some of those, uh, you'll miss some uh, hidden nuggets, especially this one here that we're going to be looking at today. Uh, First Chronicles chapter number 4, if you look at the beginning of that uh, uh, chapter, it uh, uh, talks about the sons of Judah, and and uh, uh, Perez, uh, Perez and Hezron and Carmi and Hur and Shobol and all these different names that's going through and uh, talking about this one had two wives and uh, this one the sons of Hela were uh, Zareth, verse number 7, uh, Jozar, uh, Jezor, I'm sorry, and uh, Ethnan and uh, Kaz begat Anub and Zobet, uh, Zobet Bia uh, and the families of Ar uh, Ahar, Ar Ahar Hel. Uh, uh, and the son of Haram, and uh, you know, if you were to look at those, and and all of a sudden think, what in the world? You know, and by the way, I am glad we didn't name any of our kids these names. Amen. <laughs> then you come to verse number nine and ten of this particular chapter, and it just kind of pauses for just a moment. And talks about a man by the name of Jabez. I would like you to stand with me as we read those two verses. Uh, if you would read them with me, uh, verse 9 to 10, uh, we'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll get right into the message here this morning. <laughs> Reading there, 1 Chronicles chapter number 4, verse number 9, read with me, if you will. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the name of God of Israel, saying, O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldst keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. The title of the message today, Prayer That Will Change Your Life. Prayer That Will Change Your Life. Let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you for each one that's here today. Lord, we do thank you for uh, uh, the visitors that are here as well. Lord, we're honored by their presence today. Well, Lord, I do pray during this time, Lord, our attention would be uh, arrested for just a moment during this message. 
or that uh, we wouldn't be uh, distracted, or nor would we be in distraction. Lord, I pray that uh, you would help each of us to realize that our prayer life uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes can change uh, uh, circumstances, can change people, uh, can change uh, uh, the direction even of our own life. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd help me, uh, each of us to uh, be attentive and, and grasp these uh, principles and these things here that are said today. Lord, that we'd be able to apply them to our own heart and our own life, and Lord, that it would change our prayer life, that it would change uh, uh, our church. And Lord, that we would see a revival recall, and Lord, uh, a revival prayer, uh, Lord, uh, for our, our nation, for uh, unsaved souls, or for uh, one another, or just a, a host of things. Lord, that you would work in our midst. Lord, I pray that you'd help me uh, to be, uh, uh, be able to speak the words here this morning that you would have me to speak. Lord, that you would uh, uh, just help me to, to have clarity of mind, Lord. Uh, and uh, Lord, to help me not to have any other thoughts in my mind, but Lord, those things that you desire me to say. Lord, I pray that you'll be glorified in all that's said and done here this morning. Lord, we'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for it in advance. In Jesus' precious name we pray and for his sake. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Maybe see the <laughs> Prayer can change your life. You know, every single Christian in this room has the same ability to change the course of their life and even, yea, even history just by your prayers, just as much as I do. God can change a lot of things through prayer. I've seen it happen. I've seen God uh, do miraculous things. And, and uh, I remember uh, there was a, a time uh, just a few short years ago, my wife and I, we started praying. We said, Lord, would you do something miraculous? Something uh, that is, uh, uh, we couldn't take any credit for or anything like that. And, and uh, boy, somebody uh, gave the church $25,000. Boy, you talk about miraculous, amen. But prayer is the ability of the average Christian to supernaturally move the hand of God. Prayer is the vehicle in which our faith travels, if you will. We pray and ask God to do something, and then we wait and believe that He is going to do it. You know, in uh, First Chronicles, uh, I'm sorry, Second Chronicles, uh, chapter number seven. If you were to turn there real, real quick, like with me, Second Chronicles, chapter number seven, and verse number fourteen, it says this: "If my people." which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You know what? Uh, uh, God desires for us to uh, uh, pray. You know what? Uh, too often, though, we, we have selfish prayers that we pray. I want, I want, give me, give me, give me. And too often we uh, uh, miss out on what God's trying to teach us even in a, a lesson in, in this uh, uh, particular passage here. Oftentimes, uh, our prayers are about pleasing ourselves or, or getting something. But here in our text, however, it is not a selfish <coughs> prayer. We can learn a lot from the prayer of Jabez and what his request was really for. Now, many will go through the ritual of prayer and not really pay attention to what they are praying. I have a list of uh, over 300 people that I pray for every single day, and it includes almost every single individual in this room here today. I go through that list, and I try to mix that list up many times, because I don't want to go through and, and say, well, Lord, help Brother Gary Miser, and help him in doing this, and Lord, help Sheba Waller as she's going through this. And you know, I don't want to get to that point where my prayers are just words that I go through it becomes a ritual. You and I have to realize that our prayer needs to mean something. You know, the days of, uh, of nursery, uh, nursery rhyme prayers are over. There's no room in the life of a Christian for those types of prayers. There needs to be substance to our prayers, meat uh, to our prayer life, if you will. Not just saying a prayer for your meal and considering that a, a deep prayer life, by the way. By the way, if that's the extent of your prayer life, Lord, help us. I want to challenge you that that ought, uh, ought not to be, there ought to be more to your prayer life than just praying for your food. By the way, it's good to pray for your food, amen. 
But my hope and prayer is that by the end of this message, you will realize the power of prayer and how prayer can really change your life and the life of others. I've got three things that hopefully are that often encouragement to each of you today. First of all, number one, we see a prayer for pushing out borders. A prayer for pushing out borders. If you notice in our text there in verse number 10, it says this, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. And notice the next phrase, And enlarge my host. And enlarge my host. I don't believe in, in studying this and, and going through this and, and reading commentaries on it. I don't believe his prayer was that, Lord, would you bless me so that I can have more money and that I can have more property? This is not what he was talking about. He was not talking about something uh, tangible here. He was talking about something else. You know, there are some people that just kind of plot on undeserved. They just kind of go through life and, and uh, they're content in, in maybe spiritual rituals. and uh, They're just willing to go through the motions and, and uh, just, uh, well, I'll do this just to get by. But not Jabez. Jabez had a different vision. He longed for the blessings of God, that God, uh, God would bless him and give to him. But he longed to increase his outreach, uh, to push out his borders. You know what? Uh, there's a lot of different people in this world, ain't that? Uh, there's a lot of people uh, and different lot, walks of life represented just in this room here. Amen? If you were to uh, find out where people work or, or such and, and uh, all their backgrounds, well, I tell you, there's, some, there's a lot of different backgrounds here. Brother McCoy mentioned it a little bit during the uh, uh, during the Sunday school hour that you know uh, praise the Lord for uh, uh, God's saving grace, Amen, and that God does change people and God makes us new and and all that. But we as Christians need to realize we need to reach beyond just these four walls uh, uh, with uh, with the gospel to the lost. You know, it, it is time we as Christians, we as believers, pray like Jabez. You know why? Time is short. You know, it's hard to believe here we are, June 9th, 2019. I thought it was just yesterday that uh, uh, I had my surgery. I thought it was just two days ago that 2019 began. Amen? Yeah. But here we are, five or six weeks out away from my surgery, Almost six months, uh, uh, you know, five months and, and nine days away from the beginning of the year. And here we are, June is almost half over. I, I remember uh, uh, when I was younger, I, I used to stare at the clock and it seemed like the clock would never move. Amen. I'd look at it and I'd think, boy, I thought it was just that same time just ten minutes ago. But now, things happen so quick. And life is, uh, uh, the sands of time are running out of the hourglass at, blind, at a breakneck speed. Someone once said, the situation is serious, but saints are not. You know, we have a serious situation, and that is we need <clears throat> to pray. We need to pray and, uh, like we've never prayed, prayed before. We uh, should continue to pray for each of us to grow spiritually. You need to pray for yourself to grow spiritually, by the way, not just for our church as a whole. I've been challenging our church uh, for about the last 10 years to pray for our church to grow spiritually, numerically, and financially. I have seen some spiritual growth. Would I say that every single individual is exactly where I want them to be spiritually? No. No. And I'd probably be honest this morning and say, yeah, I'm not even myself am where I would like to be spiritually. But I am going to pray for each individual. I pray that each person would grow spiritually. I pray that they would uh, uh, begin to have some victories in their lives. Amen. And then, uh, uh, you know, not only that, but praying for our church to grow not only uh, spiritually, and by the way, that means pushing out our borders spiritually. 
but also praying for uh, our church to grow numerically. You know, I want to see more people saved this year than we've ever seen saved before. You know, we've seen been, uh, some people get saved this year, and we rejoice in that. But could you imagine if each one here in this room, in this auditorium this morning, were to reach one soul, just one soul for the Lord this year, and get them to come to church? We, we wouldn't even have room to have them here, amen? We'd make room, by the way, amen? <laughs> But could you imagine if each of us said, hey, I'm going to try to win somebody to the Lord this year. I want to tell somebody about Jesus Christ and what He did for me. Amen? That's the way it ought to be. But we ought to be praying for them. Praying for our church to grow spiritually, numerically, and financially. You know, if God were, were to, uh, uh, and if God is to push out our borders, then we must do our part. That means enlarging our borders uh, demands faith. Do you trust God? Do you trust God? You know, we trust Him for our salvation, but do you trust Him beyond that? Well, I tell you, God can really enlarge your borders spiritually by uh, you increasing your faith. You trusting God in, in ways that you've never trusted Him before. <clears throat> and then, not only enlarging our, our borders demands faith, but enlarging our borders demands vision. You've got to get a vision. A vision that is beyond you. A vision that, that is uh, uh, not just about your world and what's going on in your life. But getting a vision of the lost. You know, in Lamentations chapter number 3, it says there, uh, I believe it's around verse uh, 53 or something like that, My eye affected my heart. You know, when's the last time you looked at a lost soul as somebody that is on their way to hell, on their way to, to an eternity in the everlasting fire. And you're the fire firefighter. You're the fireman. The fire lady, amen? If you want to get politically correct. <laughs> you're the fire individual to be able to say, hey, hey, let me tell you about Jesus Christ before it's too late. What if you're the only witness? You're the only Bible somebody will ever know. Would you be able to tell somebody about Jesus Christ and what, what He did for you? Would you be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with somebody? But you've got to have a vision for that, amen? <clears throat> and then enlarging our borders not only demands faith and vision, but it also enlarging our borders demands work. You know... It's not easy talking to people, especially when, uh, uh, you know, if you've ever gone cold door knocking, it's, it's not easy. You're going to somebody's house, you don't know what they're going through, you don't know what they've uh, had to deal with that day, and you're knocking on the door and saying, hi, I'm Pastor Hal from Birchview Baptist Church, and I, we're out inviting folks to our church. I've, I've gone to doors where people just say, I don't want to talk to you, <laughs> slam the door. I've had people say, hey, I've been looking for a new church home. Can you tell me more about it? I've had all, and, and all kinds of uh, responses. But you know what? It does take work. It takes some time. Amen? You're going to have to uh, be willing to say, hey, God, would you use me to be a mouth, mouthpiece for you? Lord, I want to I want to push off my borders. I don't want to just have a vision of just me and a, have this vision of us four and no more. Lord, would you help us to enlarge our borders? Oh, we see there number one a uh, uh, prayer for pushing out borders. Number one, a prayer for pushing out borders. And number two, you see there a prayer for the power of God. A prayer for the power of God. Notice what he said there back in our text in, in First Chronicles chapter number four. In verse number 10 again. It said, Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, All that thou hast blessed me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me. And that thy hand might be with me. You know, Jabez wanted God's power in enlarging his borders. You know, we cannot uh, do the things that we do of our own strength. 
we have uh, Vacation Bible School coming up uh, here in, in just a, a couple of weeks. It's hard to believe it's uh, uh, actually be just uh, a week away from tomorrow. Is that correct? You know, we cannot do Vacation Bible School without the power of God behind here. Amen? I cannot do what I do as a pastor without the power of God behind it. You know, if I try to do things of my own strength, I can do it for a little while, but eventually I'll peter out. I'll give up. But with God's strength, God will enable you to do things beyond your ability. You think, about, think about what it says in Isaiah chapter number uh, 40 and verse number 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and what? Not faint. God will enable you to do things. When you do things in His strength and in His way, He'll enable you to do things beyond your ability. You say, well, pastor, does that mean I'll be able to bench press a thousand pounds? No. You'll end up with a hernia surgery or something like that. Or you know? a broken neck. I'm saying that spiritually, God will enable you to do things beyond what you're able to do. God will enable you to do things beyond your imagination. And God's power and God's blessing only comes through prayer. You have to be willing to ask for it. You know, it says in, uh, uh, I think it's Matthew chapter number uh, 7, you have not, because what? The problem with a lot of Christians, they don't ask. They don't ask for God's blessings. They don't ask for, for God's power. You want much power? Uh, power? You need to have much prayer. You want a little power? Well, you need to have a little prayer. Prayer makes increased outreach possible. Lord, would you help us to reach more souls this year than we've ever seen reached before? Could you imagine if every single individual in this room began to pray that way? <coughs> God, would you help us to reach more souls? There are people dying on the way to hell, and we don't want to see them go there. We want to see them reach for Jesus Christ. You see, when we pray for the power of God, we will see His blessings, which will, uh, uh, which will increase our faith in Him. We'll see Him begin to bless. We'll see Him. You know, it, it's a, I've just been encouraged by what God's been doing here. This church, by the way, if you're looking for a perfect church, this is not it. All right? You've got an imperfect pastor. There are imperfect people in this room. But if you're looking for a place that God is blessing, that God is answering prayer, this is that place. If you're looking for a place that God is doing a work in people's hearts, this is that place. I've seen God do a perfect work in every single heart. You and I have to be willing to say, okay, Lord, would you, would, would your, you send your Holy Spirit to do a work that we cannot do? You know, I, I can't... Uh, I've talked with uh, other pastors about this before. I, I can try to preach a message that will try to bring conviction in people's hearts. But it will only last for a little period of time until I'm off the scene. But if I allow the Holy Spirit, by the way, the Holy Spirit does a much better job convicting hearts than I could ever do. Amen. And if I can uh, preach a message and the Holy Spirit can convict a heart about their need of salvation, we'll see them get saved about their need to, to change their life. We'll see the, a, a true change take, uh, take place in their life. God will then enlarge our outreach with His gospel. We'll begin to be able to see uh, uh, us reach folks that we never thought were possible to reach before. You know, I, I've, I don't know about you, but I've always felt intimidated, intimidated sometimes by doctors. Amen? This last week here uh, on Monday, I got to see my doctor and, and had my checkup, and, and I still have some restrictions and still have to do some things for a little while yet, and, and, uh, but I'm at least healing. He said, hey, things are looking better at least. Praise the Lord for that. But you know, 
God desires for us to even reach even those doctors with the gospel of Jesus Christ. God desires that we reach every single soul. Every single soul is valuable to God. We know that. He said, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There's value in every single person. There's value in you, by the way. And God can use you. Uh, but you need to have a prayer for the power of God. Number one, a prayer that will change your life, a prayer for pushing out borders. Number two, a prayer for the power of God. And lastly, number three, a prayer for purity of life. A prayer for purity of life. What you notice back in our text there, verse number 10, it says, And that thou uh, wouldest keep me from evil, <coughs> that it may not grieve me, God granted him that which he requested. You know, Jabez saw the danger of falling into sin. <coughs> I've seen, you know, all, all your losses can be, uh, uh, all, I'm sorry, all our gains can become losses if we, we don't stay pure. I've seen people where they had a testimony, they, they did what was right, and they, they uh, obeyed the Lord and followed the Lord all these years, and then all of a sudden, in just one act, that only took a, a moment of time, maybe a couple minutes, maybe even a few seconds. I've seen that testimony lost to a lot of people. Why? Because they weren't concerned about purity, staying pure. Notice what he said there in verse number 10 again. That it may, uh, he said, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. You know the problem with sin is that it grieves every single individual. Oh, I, I know people, uh, you know, uh, I've heard people say, oh, we'll be happy in hell, you know, we'll have a party down there. No, I'm sorry. Uh, the reality of it is uh, you're going to have, uh, you're going to be burning forever and ever and ever and for all eternity if you're not saved. But you think about this, an individual, a Christian, can lose the joy of their salvation. They can't lose their salvation. They can lose the joy of their salvation if they're in sin. That's why, that's why David said in Psalm chapter 51, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Why? He had lost the joy of it. He didn't lose his salvation. But sin does grieve uh, a Christian. It grieves the Holy Spirit, we know that, amen. But it grieves a Christian. I, I don't know a, a person in this room that would say, you know, be in sin and, and say, boy, I'm happy. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not the truth. The truth is that, that sin does grieve. You know, you cannot sin and win. Sin will always bring grief. It's like that saying, sin will take you farther than you want to go. Sin will cost you far more than you want to pay. It always will. You have to be willing to say, Lord, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry for the sin. Lord, would you forgive me? You see, the end result is that your life will not be pleasing to the Lord, and God cannot bless you when there is sin in your life. If you say, well, I, I have this sin. Nobody needs to know about it. I'm just going to keep it in my life, and, and it's uh, nobody else's business. Look, it's God's business. Amen? You have to be willing to say, hey, I'm going to clean this room up. I'm going to clean up my life so that my life will be pleasing to Him. You need to pray and ask God for forgiveness of your sin. Ask God to help you not to offend Him in what you do. Can you imagine if you would pray for God to help you to keep your life pure before Him? What a, what a difference would be made. Amen. Now I want you to notice the end result. Notice what it said there in verse number 10, the latter part of it. It says, And God granted him that which he requested. What if God granted your prayer? What if God answered your prayer today? What kind of prayer have you been praying? What have you been praying for? So I haven't been praying for anything. Well, that's what you'll get. 
But if you've been praying for certain things, saying, Lord, would you help me? Lord, would you work in this? Lord, would you grant this? See, God answered Jabez's prayer. But you have to be willing to pray. Prayer that will change your life. <clears throat> prayer that will change your life can only come from a, con a, a constant and consistent prayer life. God granted Jabez his request. His borders were enlarged. The power of God was on his life, and his life was clean. The Lord longs to do the same for you and I, but you and I must be willing to ask. Are you willing to pray and believe like Jabez? Will you pray with me for our church to grow spiritually, numerically, and financially? Will you pray with me that our church will abound in love for one another this year? Will you pray for a revival in our heart and in our church? Are you willing to do what it takes to have a life-changing prayer life? How about it? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Prayer that will change your life. Maybe here today, you know the message wasn't about salvation. I did mention about it. If you're here today and say, Pastor Callum, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure heaven's my eternal home. That I recall there's never been a time in my life when I invited Jesus Christ into my heart to be my personal Lord and Savior. Pastor, in this brief prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate to me just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Yes, thank you. I see that hand. Anybody else? Pastor, I don't know if I'm saved. Yes, thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. You may slip it down. Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. I don't know if I'm saved. Would you pray for me? The other question is this, though. Say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. I feel like sometimes my prayers are just kind of bouncing off the ceiling. You know the verse in Psalm chapter number 66 and verse 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And I just feel like my prayer is not changing anything. It's not doing something. God spoke in my heart today, Pastor, through the message. And I need to pray, have a, have a prayer life that's going to change some things. Change my life, change my family, change our church. Pastor, in this group prayer, would you pray for me? God's going to come on. You didn't that need just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down. I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hands all over this auditorium here this morning. Thank you. They slip them down. Yes, I see this one over here as well. You say, Pastor, I didn't raise my hand just a moment ago, but would you pray for me? God spoke in my heart as well. Would you pray for me? Is anybody else like that here today? Yes, thank you. I see that hand. Anybody else? Thank you. Please let down. Yes, I see that one. Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. God spoke in my heart. Just a moment. We're going to have a hymn of invitation. I want to invite you. God spoke in your heart. Won't you come? You're not sure of your soul's salvation. We'll have somebody, you come up here, we'll have somebody uh, take the word of God and show you from God's word how you can know for sure where you're going to spend eternity. Won't you come? Won't you come? Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts. Bless this invitation time, Lord. I pray that you be glorified through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.